Hello, I am K-pop World and welcome to my channel. So if you haven't been living under a rock like myself, then you probably already know about the National Assembly summons that Hybe got and that Honey also received. Honey went to the National Assembly to talk about her experience with workplace bullying and Hybe was summoned due to an audit that the National Assembly had completed in Hybe. And let me tell you, the internal weekly report that was found in HYBE has some very shocking things in it. Not only that, the documents that the National Assembly had weren't even all of the weekly reports that HYBE had at hand. But first, I want to talk about Honey and her appearance at the National Assembly because I'm not going to lie to you, I don't think she should have been invited or asked to come and speak about workplace bullying. And before you come for me in the comments, here's why. So the testimony that Hani gave at the National Assembly is basically the same story that she told everybody in the live stream that her and the New Jeans girls gave, which is that a manager from a different group and a different company told her group to ignore Hani when they were coming out of the hair and makeup room and that she reported this to CEO Kim, but CEO Kim basically did nothing to help her. Not only that, but a big, big executive in the building would always ignore them ever since since they debuted, which we know to be Bang PD, because these are secrets they revealed a while back when the feud between Minhajin and Hybe was still hot. Now, what she added into this testimony was that she actually had a recording talking to CEO Kim about the whole issue and how they were planning on resolving it. She also talked about having a recording of the security guard who works with all the security footage and how he accidentally let it slip that the footage that she was looking for was actually deleted from the system. Now, CEO Kim did say that it is very difficult to resolve the issue because the manager of the other group is from a different company and she is denying with her life that the altercation that Honey is describing never happened and that what Honey is describing was never said. Honey also said that she actually wanted to have a sit down with the manager with everyone, I guess, higher in the room so they could properly hash out the situation. CEO Kim, however, said that it would be difficult because the other manager is from a different company and as the CEO of Adore, she doesn't really have jurisdiction over a manager from a different company. Now, whether all of this is true or not, honestly, is only God knows because I don't believe a thing that anybody says anymore. One thing I will say, though, is that Hive deleting the footage of this whole incident alleged, allegedly, oh God, save me. Hybe allegedly deleting the footage of this whole interaction is probably the most genius part of this whole incident. Now stay with me for a little bit because I am going to play a little a devil's advocate. Okay, don't cut for me. But think about it. Hybe literally deleted the small part of footage that Honey needed to prove her story correct. Without that piece of footage, it really is just the he said, she said. And we don't know who to believe because we're not in the Hybe building with them and we have not seen the footage either. And even if Honey did have all these recordings of everyone changing their stories and the security guard basically admitting that the footage was deleted, allegedly, she can't prove any of it. Even if they did have the footage, she can't prove that it would show the manager telling the group to ignore her. So by deleting the small piece of evidence that would basically blow all of this out of the water, Hybe has created the biggest chaos in this whole mess. What would have been a very small fix, very quick fix, has inadvertently turned into something so big. Now, before I tell you the reason why I don't think Honey should have attended the National Assembly, I want to first start off by saying that I think Honey is incredibly brave for doing something like this, for standing up for herself against a very big corporation and speaking out on what she believes to be workplace bully. Now, the first reason why I don't think Honey should have attended is I think she's too young to understand the importance of the National Assembly that she personally attended. And I say this because if she understood the importance and the severity of the situation that she was in, she wouldn't have taken a selfie with the CEO of Hanwha Ocean, who was there to answer for why five people had died in that month and why there are many more people who died at work from his company. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's no way she could have known who he was when she was taking the photo with him because he was sitting in front of her. She could barely see the man. And I agree. There's no way she could have known. I barely know the politicians in my own country. 
I don't expect her to know the businessmen of a different country that she's technically not even from. So yes, she couldn't have known who he was. But you are in the National Assembly. It has begun. It's not a matter of we're still waiting for the assemblymen to show up and for the representatives to show up. They're already there. This whole thing had already begun. And she's okay with taking a selfie in the middle of something that is super important this is broadcasted on national television and she's taking a selfie with a fan and i would be willing to excuse this if it was just a matter of this man took out his phone and just try to get her in the photo no she leaned over put a smile on her face so that she could be in the photo i I, no I, i mean there's no excusing that and there's certainly no defending it Now, the second reason I don't think she should have attended is because I don't feel like her problem or her experience with workplace bullying was as severe as the other cases. I just think this whole thing with Hive and New Jeans and Minhajin has gone way too far to the point where we're bringing problems to the National Assembly that technically should be handled in-house. So to be at the National Assembly where people are trying to get answers for why their loved ones and friends died at work and your experience with workplace bullying is that the chairman of the company that you work for has ignored you since you guys debuted and that a manager from another company that works with another group basically told her group to ignore you. It just feels a little out of touch with reality. I hate to say it, I honestly do believe that she was brave for coming out and saying that she feels like they're being ostracized in the company and that there's employees that hate them. I mean, it was brave of her, but let's be honest, technically, technically, even legally and technically, employees in the company don't have to like you. I think they just have to respect you as a colleague and as a person. I will agree with that. Also, let's be honest, is it any surprise that employees in the company don't really like new jeans currently? After all, Minha Jin did throw groups under the bus, namely Mm -hmm. Lasarifim and Al It. And I feel like a lot of people had to work really hard to clean up a mess that Minha Jin made in one press conference after spending weeks months maybe even years building brands for these groups Minha Jin basically just tore it down in two seconds so is it really a wonder that maybe people don't like new jeans currently because they sided with Minha Jin thus undoing a lot of people's hard work and the third reason I don't think that Hani should have gone to the National Assembly is because it feels like the National Assembly is giving preferential treatment to popular idols as opposed to idols who have actually gone through some very horrific and traumatic things. It's no secret that K-pop is really just not a great industry, especially if you debut under a small to medium company. The chances of success and garnering a very big fandom are very low. Therefore, you will never have the kind of success and popularity that allows you to attend the National Assembly to talk about your hardships. So Honey was lucky and fortunate enough to have that popularity and to have the fandom that could make it happen. And I guess everybody thought that with this opportunity, she would make the most of it and talk about what other idols and trainees could possibly be going through at the moment of her giving her speech and what other idols have gone through in the past. But unfortunately, Honey only talked about her experience with workplace bullying, which was being ignored and possible ostracization. Her testimony at the National Assembly left some people quite disappointed. In fact, I was quite disappointed because she really had been given a platform to possibly make a change. And unfortunately, she can only talk about her experience because also Min Jin did shield the girls very well, which thank God she did. I don't think they deserve to go through or shield should even know about what other idols could possibly be going through but I feel like if you're given a platform like the one that Honey was given you would at least try to speak up for other people who will not get the opportunity that she got at the National Assembly. If the National Assembly really cared about K-pop idols and what they go through in their companies, then they would have summoned Chu from Luna to talk about how when she tried to sue Blockberry Creative, they basically try to have her blacklisted from the industry. Not to mention the fact that they wouldn't pay her what she was legally owed and what was agreed upon in their contract. Not only that, but they would have intervened or at least summoned members from Omega X or one member from Omega X to talk about what they went through with Spire Entertainment CEO when she basically 
beat them and then left them in a different country with little to no money. Or they could have called members from the East Light, a K-pop band, I believe, that was abused by their producer and the CEO knew about it. And their CEO didn't do anything. The only thing he ever did was basically tell the producer, hey, don't beat them that hard. They could have called members from BAP who were overworked and they weren't paid. They literally could have called anybody else in addition to honey to talk about the shit that they go through in k-pop companies but no no they just don't care this was a very well-timed fan meeting for them at the expense of taxpayers because also i found it so weird that they were basically fanboying over her we're talking about politicians grown men People who have kids at home and a wife, not to mention possible grandchildren, and they're fanboying over this 20-year-old girl. It was weird. It just, it was weird. Them, one of them is a politician, had a whole bunny sticker on his laptop. Are you kidding me? These are people who make the laws. So I quickly want to talk about something that CEO Kim said, which I found super odd. And what happened after was even more odd. So in the testimony in the National Assembly, CEO Kim literally says that K-pop idols are not employees by law. She says by law. It's one thing to say they're not employees. And then it's another thing entirely to say they're not employees by law. And I found that so weird because what do you mean they're not employees? They're contracted. They sign contracts. They get paid by the company. Things get done for them by the company. How does that make sense, lady? Now, it gets even weirder when the people who make the law, people who know the law very well, are in this very room with them. They do not blink. They do not bat an eyelash at what she says. Nobody questions her statement. They just go forward with the next question by saying, well, how is Hybe dealing with this? How, what is Hybe's policy to make all of this fair? I'm like, I'm sorry, she just said by law, K-pop idols are not employees. You're not going to question that at all. So I did very light research. To be fair, I should have done better research, but I didn't. And what I've understood from the very little research I have done, please, I could be wrong, feel free to correct me, is that technically K-pop idols are self-employed. <laughs> This really does not make sense to me and I'm hoping somebody can explain this to me properly in the comments. But what I've understood is that they are actually self-employed artists who are contracted by a company. So basically artists are freelancers that give their services to these companies. Again, please feel free to correct me in the comments if I am wrong. This is just from the very light research I'm talking. I skimmed off the top kind of research that I did. Now, after the whole National Assembly with Honey thing happened, I was seeing a lot of messages of support for Honey and power to her for standing up for herself on such a big platform. But the messages that I was seeing that were making my eye twitch a little bit was people saying, or oh, fans, netizens, whatever, saying that what Honey did would actually help other K-pop groups in the long run. And honestly, what I want to know is how. I don't understand how anybody watched Honey give her testimony at the National Assembly and thought, yeah, you know, that that testimony is going to change lives. No, I don't think so. And I could be wrong. And if I am wrong, I will admit it in a later video if I see change. But I don't think this is going to change any other K-pop idols fate in the long run. And here's why. The preferential treatment that the National Assembly has shown towards New Jeans and towards Honey just shows that you have to have amassed an incredible incredible amount of success and popularity in order to be heard out by the lawmakers of the country. If you are a small, insignificant, barely scraping by group that is being beaten into a coma, nobody's gonna give a damn because we don't know who you are. You don't make money. You're not on billboards. You're not an ambassador of a luxury brand. Why the hell should we give a shit? This is the message that feels like is being sent out. Honey said that the reason why she was coming forward is so that her seniors, her juniors, and the trainees don't have to go through what she went through. But let's be honest, her seniors are BTS, 17, and Hypen, TXT, La Sarafem, we'll put them, they're technically same age age. And then her juniors, I'll add, and then we'll add the trainees. BTS, 17, debuted in super broke companies on the verge of bankruptcy. They lived in very tiny spaces, very horrendous 
the kind of rooms you would not live in with your senses intact. They faced terrible verbal and mental abuse from the industries, from people who host variety shows to people who work at music shows. These are people who were basically telling them that they will never amount to anything. These are two groups that had to basically fight for their position at the top. And fair play to them, they are at the top now and they are very lucky to have found success. And then the other seniors, TXT and Hype and Lasara Film, were lucky enough to debut under a company with enough resources that could help them and make sure that they were never in the position that BTS and Seventeen were in. I mean, I kind of forgot about From Us 9, From Us 9 as well, but they're kind of in the basement in Hive. But they did come from Pallades, so they probably also went through some very horrendous stuff as well. And then the juniors being Al It. Min Hye Jin dragged Al It's name right through the mud. I don't know, how does that not count as workplace bullying? Min Hye Jin basically initiated the hate train that Al It got. Also, most of these groups are unlikely to go through anything that Honey described or she's standing up for by saying that she doesn't want her seniors and her juniors to go through what she went through because most of these groups work very closely with Pang PD. And then the others, the trainees, if we're adding them. As trainees, they're basically overworked and not paid possibly at all because you're not a contractual employee. Not only that, but you're judged very harshly by the people who examine you in dance, singing, and your looks. Honestly, Honey could have said a lot of things that could have helped reshape the K-pop culture, even if just a little bit. Now that we've seen how far this Min Hye Jin and New Jeans versus Hype situation has gone, I just, I'm thinking to myself, I really, this question has been bugging me for a long time and I'm hoping somebody can answer it for me, even though it'll never probably be the actual answer, we can all just only speculate. And the question is, would New Jeans and their parents have come out with all of these stories that apparently New Jeans went through when they were trainees and things that happened before they debuted, as well as all of the stories they told us that happened to them post-debut? Would all of these stories have come out if Min Hye Jin never had problems with Hybe? If things were still smooth sailing with Adore and Min Hye Jin and Hybe and they never had all these problems? If Min Hye Jin wasn't kicked out of her position? Would we have known any of this? Would the parents have come out with any of these? Would Honey be saying that she's trying to tell her side of the story so that other people don't have to go through what she's going through? Would any of this have come to light if things were still smooth sailing with Hybe, Min Hye Jin, and Odor? Is this revelation of the truth for morality reasons and ethical reasons? Or is this a self-serving revelation? Is it just to help them and help Min Hye Jin out? in trying to get her back in the CEO position and help her win her fight against Hype. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section. Moving on, let's talk about Hybe's testimony at the National Assembly because the environment was entirely opposite to that of Honey's, where Honey, there would seem to be a lot of support from the representative and the politicians that were there. With Hybe, it was hostility. There was a lot of hostile energy towards the Hybe representative, who is the CEO of Bilaf Lab. He's also the CEO of Hybe. Now, initially, Bang Pidi was the one that was summoned to be at the National National Assembly, but Kim Tae Ho went as a representative of Hybe. Now, the biggest talking point on the National Assembly that Hybe attended was the internal weekly report that is given to the high ranking executives of Hybe. Then, let's just say some of the things written on these internal weekly reports are some of the worst things that I have seen written or said about K pop idols. So, when Kim Tae Ho was asked about the weekly internal report and why it is that Hybe has such derogatory and insulting comments on K-pop idols and trainees. Kim Tae Ho said that the report does not reflect Hybe's stance on K-pop idols. It is comments that they got from online forums and other places online. It's basically Knet opinions. That's what he said. But the representative insisted that these were documents and comments that were compiled by Hybe employees. Even after the National Assembly representative insisted that this was Hybe stand, Kim Tae-ho basically stood on his testimony that this was just market research compiled together from comments that netizens had made online. Now it was mentioned in I think a statement that Hybe made during the National Assembly that is now deleted that the comments 
showed from the weekly reports in the National Assembly seem to be cherry-picked and that they cherry-picked the worst ones and redacted it in such a way that it made it seem like this was hype stance on certain K-pop idols and certain groups. Now, whether this is true that this is hype's personal stance on the weekly report, whether it's their employee stance or them, or if it's market research from netizens i leave that to you to decide for yourself because i'm not gonna lie i am kind of confused i honestly don't know which one it is i don't know if i think this is hives or if i think this is netizens there are certain comments that i look at and i'm like this has to be an employee's thought because this doesn't feel like something a netizen would write and then there's other things other comments that i've seen that i thought yeah and it isn't could have written that so i leave that to you to decide because honestly i have no idea who's lying and who's telling the truth especially when it comes to hype all they do i swear to god is a lie now i feel like if you're watching this video you've already seen the comments from the internal report that was shown in the national assembly and publicized so i'm not really going to go into details about that now in terms of hype it wasn't just the internal report that was a topic of discussion at the national assembly there was also accusations of Sajagi, which is chart manipulation. The accusation that the representative made was that high bulk buys albums with the policy that the albums could be returned and refunded. Not only that, but that they incentivize purchases with fan signing events. Now, this all ties into the state of K pop right now, which is honestly incentivizing album sales with fan signing events is a norm in K pop now. That's what every K pop company does right now. If if you buy an album you stand a chance to win a spot at a fan signing event now in terms of bulk bag min Hajin did in a press conference accuse hype and the hype labels of bulk buying their own albums to boost sales numbers now what i've hated the most about the whole national assembly fiasco is the fake concern from these politicians i swear i don't believe not an inch of their soul not an inch of their bones is sincere about all of this that is happening whether it's the honey case whether it is the hive case there is a lack of sincerity this really is just it's fake concern these are people who are lawmakers these politicians in the national assembly they make and correct the law these are the people with the power to change the law or to make the law in such a way that it protects these k-pop idols and they basically for years have chosen not to do it which is why the industry has festered in the way that it is now starting with the internal report and how they badmouth k-pop idols and k-pop groups visuals and looks k-pop is a very shallow very vain industry where looks are more important than talent we've seen that time and time again where some of the most good looking k-pop idols and groups are basically exposed to have little to no talent or they have talent in performance and no talent in singing as far as these k-pop companies are concerned k-pop fans really do seem to flock more to groups groups with good look and good visuals as opposed to groups with great talent great music and no visuals at all not only is that a problem but it also leads to a lot of k-pop idols being sexualized by fans and just by a lot of creeps on the internet and just the company themselves it feels like they do stuff or paint the idol in a light that caters to these fans that sexualize these idols whether it be minors or k-pop idols who are vets and have been in the industry for years this seems to be a practice that has been around for a very long time and the government these politicians have done nothing to try and fix it or to try and put laws in place to protect these idols not only that but when when plans are put into place to try and protect the safety of K-pop idols, the National Assembly had it thrown out and said this could be seen as preferential treatment. Let me explain. So on one hand, you have the National Assembly basically denouncing HYBE for its internal weekly report and for the treatment that it has shown to Honey and to the New Jeans girls. And on the other hand, you have a separate national assembly committee rejecting the installation of a celebrity entrance for the safety of the idols and the public now we all know the mess that is a arrival and a departure for k-pop idols at Incheon airport 
They actually had plans in place to create a celebrity entrance and the celebrity entrance would be the entrance that diplomats and high level politicians use. And the entrance was going to be used as a way to prevent congestion and create more safety for the public, for people who are on the planes with these K-pop idols and for the K-pop idols themselves. It's so crazy to me that they rejected this by saying that it could be seen as preferential treatment, even though they did get backlash from the public. I feel like if Incheon Airport went through with the plans, it would have helped so many K-pop idols because the mobbing is insane. And for the committee to reject it and say that no, it shouldn't be put into place because it could be seen as preferential treatment. Well, on the other hand, we see a different committee at the National Assembly denouncing and reprimanding high before its treatment of idols is ridiculous to me. It, it's really ridiculous because how is it that on one hand you're showing concern for K-pop idols and on the other hand, your compatriots are basically saying, ah, who cares if they're getting mobbed to death? death and possibly injured at the airport you will not give them their own entrance absolutely not the fake concern is ridiculous don't get me wrong i am angered by a lot of the stuff that was in the internal weekly report again whether it came from netizens or hype themselves or their employees i really think it's so terrible to talk about k-pop idols in this way i get that the k-pop industry is shallow and vain and it's about looks but some of the things that are said in there are really just so horrific. And again, what is astounding, the politician that was representing the National Assembly, this man has the nerve to say, oh, in this little internal report of yours, do you realize you say really derogatory stuff about minors? And I'm like, oh my gosh, if you cared about minors, you would put laws in place that prevent these K-pop companies from debuting kids into these groups. The fake concern is beyond me it's it's beyond me honestly i think even though i am angered and really just shocked by the stuff that was in the internal report i'm almost not surprised because we've known for years and years if you've been in k-pop for a long time then you know that these companies are hella shady this is practically the tip of the iceberg i think the lack of support from the law for these k-pop idols and k-pop groups is the reason why these k-pop companies are able to play in all of these gray areas where it's technically not illegal legal even though morally ethically it's wrong it's not illegal it's also why a lot of these companies are able to take advantage of these k-pop idols because they are young they are naive they really just they're kids with big dreams and they want to see their dreams come true but god for bid you try and have a contract dispute with these companies they will blacklist you from this industry they will strip you of any dream that you ever had of becoming a singer and if any k-pop idols do end up finding themselves in a position where they are fighting with their company over contract disputes because they are trying to get out and get into a more fair contract if you ever leave and you are blacklisted there is very little that the law can actually do for you because there's no laws that are put into place that will help you fight against against these companies if they want to have you blacklisted. It's really sad that this is the industry that we choose to support every single day. And honestly, I am part of the problem because I listen to the songs, I watch the music videos, I stream the music. The worst part about all of this is in a few months time or possibly next year, nobody's really going to care about all of this that's happening with Hybe. We're always going to remember it, but they're going to go on. It's going to be business as usual, as if all of this never even happened. Now, of course, these are all just my opinions on the situation. You are free to share yours with me in the comment section below. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Until our next dance of K-pop, goodbye.